Roderick Strong versus Commander. So, I don't know if you heard about this, but on Rampage, Commander was in a trios match last Friday. That was absolutely fantastic. And it's Rampage, so I don't think anyone saw it. And I made a spiel on the show about how somewhere on Dynamite, they just need to air this match. Does the whole thing start to finish? Uh, they did not do that. I didn't really expect them to, but they did not do that. They did not air highlights. They did not air a single frame or a single clip. They simply said, there was a tremendous trios match. Too bad you missed it. And moved on. Match itself, I thought this match was awesome. They're going a thousand miles an hour. Both guys look great. Just super explosive athletes. We have a, more cases where there, there's... I don't I don't mind comedy and wrestling, but there's there can be too much of a good thing, and there can be wrong place, wrong time. Roderick Strong with a mustache, where the announcers are talking about the mustache, laughing at him, and stuff, talking about what a great match this is, and what an awesome wrestler he is. Killing. Killing the whole act. Needs to, uh, I mean, the, 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 the gimmick of screaming people's names is over. The, the, the neck brace is over. Keep that, but we need, we need to... Crank down the comedy a little bit here. Just have him be an awesome wrestler. Uh, the commander makes his comeback. Does a rope walk moonsault onto the whole crew. But he tries to springboard in. Springboard in. Roddy catches him with a jumping knee in midair. And when I say midair, I mean like the middle of the, the arena. They're at 80 feet over the, the ring, it looked like. And uh, he's got this finish called the end of heartache. Where he does a su uh, suplex. And then drops their back across his knees. But it's Commander, so they're just going to make this as awesome as they can. So he added a whole extra, well, half extra revolution. Comes down on his belly across Roddy's knees and gets pinned. I thought that match was tremendous. I, I didn't care for it. Oh. I guess the biggest thing to me, because, like, I don't get Roddy's gimmick. Like, to me, the comedy's gone too far. When, like, I just don't get it. Like, the announcers will talk about him being in a wheelchair, and it's like, like, it's a comedy gimmick. He's not really hurt. But they sort of acknowledge it as if it is, but sometimes it isn't. And it's just, like, just the gimmick I don't get. Like, clearly, they're both great wrestlers. Mm -hmm. But I, I just don't, like, I just look at Roderick Strong and think, like, why would anyone do any of this unless there was some serious mental issues <laughs> like he's yeah. screaming these names it's like why would a, anyone with his, all his faculties would act this way other than they think it's funny and then so like I, it's just not for me in that regard it just comes off cartoonish oh yeah but the other thing too that i was surprised because i again i don't watch the shows often i've heard a lot about commander or commander or whatever however you pronounce the name appropriately and it's like, in this match, it's like, other than the rope walk moonsault to the floor, it's like, every single high fly thing he tried, it's like, Roddy just killed him. <laughs> well, like, he tried to do a flip, and Roddy just take his legs out and put him on the mat. And then he'd try to do this other thing, he'd knock him out of the air, and I'm just like, this commander guy, it's like, he's agile, but like, all his shit fails. Um, the finish did look fucking fantastic. Yeah. Give him that. Very low success rate for Commander in this match. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he's a guy where they, they don't know what to do with him. They know he's awesome. So they just put him on TV and have him lose all the time. And uh, you would think one of these 75 titles they have, they could find something productive to do with him. But uh, right now, yeah. he's just kind of treading water, having awesome matches. Like, just from a a match structure standpoint, maybe that's what they're going for to to trick you. But, like, watching this match, I'm like... And I, I knew the finish because I had heard spoilers by the time I watched it. But I'm just like, this is the match I'd put together if Commander was going to beat me with a really cool something. Mm. It's like I'd be the cocky heel that cuts him off with this high-flying thing. And I cut off this high-flying thing. I'm like, ah, this high-flying shit doesn't work with me. I've got this guy scouted. And then he does his last really fucking cool thing and beats me. And I'm all pissed off about it. Yeah. But for him to fail on 8 out of 10 of his high-flying things and lose, I was just shocked. I think uh, when this devil and his goons are revealed, Roderick Strong is going to be a big part of it, one way or another. So I think that's why the match went like it did, but you are certainly not wrong. By the way, I looked this up and forgot to mention it. Uh, Soraya's last singles match, October 10th, my birthday, uh, she dropped the women's title to Hikaru Shida. Since then, she had a tag match on Collision and lost. Uh, she had a trios match on Rampage and lost, and then she had this uh, number one contender match here against Riho and lost. So mm -hmm. that's that's what she's been up to. 
So Renee goes to interview Roddy and his crew. They have printed signs reading MJF is the devil. They're passing them out to all the people. Roddy's being very wacky, screaming everyone's name. Says it's time for Joe to believe him because Joe is his best friend by proxy. And uh, really, that was it. And uh, this is also wacky. And I don't know if it added anything to anything. In fact, I'm quite sure it did not, now that I think about it. Uh, from Collision, we have Thunder Rosa returning to save Abaddon from Julia Hart and Sky Blue, whose name is still Sky Blue, by the way. We left that show in great confusion whether she had changed her name or not, but they still called her Sky Blue. Uh, the stars of AEW go to watch the new Aquaman movie in their 3D glasses. Then they all review it. You'll never guess, they like the movie. They're all big fans of this movie they were paid to watch. And the Continental Classic last qualifying match in the Gold League, John Moxley, 4-0, 12 points, versus Jay White, 3-1, 9 points. Match ruled. Uh, they, they, it's funny because all these matches, they have, they've not done a time limit draw, but uh, I think that they did one match on collision that went like five minutes, but almost all of these have gone like minimum 12 minutes. So they come out here teasing finishers with uh, Moxie doing the uh, hammer and anvil elbows and going for the death rider, trying the bulldog choke, and Jay fleeing. Uh, they got to rear naked sleeper on it like the two second mark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, Moxie's running wild, but he misses a kick in the corner. His leg gets snapped in the ropes. They're actually teasing a ref stoppage. Uh, so we go to break. When you come back, Mox is making a comeback. Hits a tope. He's still selling his knee. It was funny. They're doing all this right in front of a sign in the crowd saying that, uh, spoiler, Mo John Moxley is going to bleed. And he never did. <laughs> he probably saw that sign and said, well, fuck you, buddy. I'm going to not bleed tonight. So uh, again, they're clever with the chairs here. Jay White grabs two of them. And the ref sees him with one and disposes of that chair, which lets White use the other chair to hit a chair to the knee. Almost wins by count out off that, which actually would have been great because, again, there has been a count out in this tournament. As uh, Moxie's coming in, goes to the Blade Runner, gets turned into a paradigm shift. They're trading strikes, and Mox gets a cutter out of nowhere, but Jay responds with a sleeper, sleeper, a sleeper suplex into Uranagi. And that's really the end for our friend John Moxley. He is the Kiwi Crusher. For two count, and uh, Mox is able to grab him for a Death Rider attempt, but White flips all the way over, gets the Blade Runner, a clean win here. It was another great wrestling match. Yeah, Jay White's one of my favorite current wrestlers alive. I think he's freaking fantastic, so I really like this. But I again, I do, and he actually, he really made a lot of efforts to get back in and break the count when they were on the floor. Yeah. But uh, when Mox beat that teased count out at nine, he had been on the floor for over two minutes. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, it's nine groups of ten separate seconds. Yeah. Which actually still is only a minute and a half. So Now, realistically, the speed by which a ref does the count is probably three seconds a number when they take their time. But still, two minutes is a bit much. I really would have appreciated if they uh, honored the countout stips better in the tournament. But, yeah, this was an excellent match. Um, both guys are great. But, again, Jay is one of my uh, favorites walking the earth today. So this was a hell of a finish right out of nowhere. And uh, three-way should uh, be interesting. So there will be a, th will be a three-way three -way to determine the Gold League winner on Dynamite next week. Swerve Who comes. Who are you packing? Uh, I think... That's a very good question, actually. The storyline that makes maybe the most sense would be Moxley versus Kingston in the finals. The, the two old frenemies meeting one last time. Or, the, well, one more time. And this is last. Um, Swerve is on fire right now, and it seems like the, the iron is hot. Uh, I think White, Jay White would be the long shot because he just had a pay-per-view main event. So uh, I don't think it's, he's going to be at the very tippy top for a while here. Uh, but it's pretty much a coin flip between the other two. You, you could go either way. I'm going Swerve. They're doing a lot of Swerve. He did, he... My prediction last week with Brian was that Mox would beat Swerve in their regular tournament match, and they would both end up in the final, and Swerve would get his win, bag, uh, win back and advance. Mm -hmm. And Jay is in the mix now, um, so Swerve could win without touching Mox, but uh, mm, good point. I'm, I'm going with Swerve. Swerve has pinned Jay White. He has not pinned Moxley. <clears throat> In fact, Moxley had to cheat to beat him, if you recall. So, uh, yeah, we can, they can go a lot of different ways there. The other thing I want to point out before we close this, this, mm -hmm. this episode, how great or how much greater would this tournament be if 
Tony Khan had kept all the Ring of Honor titles in Ring of Honor and all the AEW titles in AEW, all the New Japan titles in New Japan. Obviously, both New Japan and AEW could be defended on uh, uh, Forbidden Door. But if the titles stayed exclusive to each company's television show, crowning this triple crown champion with a AEW belt, a Ring of Honor belt, and New Japan belt, and have this one championship that can be defended in all companies, this triple crown, I think, would mean so much more than it's just another title that's defended on a whole bunch of shows and all the belts are the same. I think that's the idea they're going for. They just still have three separate physical belts, one to be revealed. But Ring of Honor belts are defended on AEW all the time. AW I see. belts are defended. Like, they're just... I see. There's nothing special about it other than we've put three secondary titles together and it's we're calling it one. Gotcha. But if you only saw Ring of Honor title matches in Ring of Honor and you only saw AEW title matches in AEW, this belt would be special. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.